Hello, my name is Brian and welcome to the Win911 How To Instructional Video Series. In this video, I'll be discussing system platform and how you can bring your alarms over into Win911. The first step in the process is inside of Win911, you'll be in the Alarming System Platform Galaxies tab. From here, you can select Connection Details, and this is where, where you will define the galaxy that you, that you wish to connect to. My galaxy is called Win911. In here, you can also define the areas for which areas you want to bring in. I'm choosing everything in building one. The next step in the process is configuring your watchdog. Your watchdog could be something such as a PLC heartbeat or a skater alarm you wish to monitor. Whatever your event you choose, you can set up a watchdog in here. This is just a demo and not an actual real or recommended watchdog, but you can see you make a name, description, area, and then the device you wish to alarm on. Finally, you'll decide which strategy you wish to deploy when this watchdog goes off. I've selected the critical strategy. That's a strategy that I made for this video. If you need more information on tactics and strategies, please go back and watch those how-to instructional videos. This is a rundown of all the SCADAs that Win91 supports for our direct connect method. As you can see, we'll be focusing on system platform today. To bring your alarms over in system platform, you'll need to use the alarm subscription method. In doing so, you'll be able to filter your alarms based on area, object attributes, and priorities. Inside the subscription filters, you can create a filter based on these areas, objects, and priorities I just mentioned. These items are all anded together. Inside here, the blue items, these are ORed. So in this example, we will be looking for something that has an area that contains the word level or does not contain valve and has a specific object attribute area that is safety or pump. Notice the wildcard feature here. We're using the asterisk for a wildcard for anything before that. Finally, we'll be including anything that includes the specific priority range between 500 and 1000. Here's a list of the alarms I'll be using for my demo. I recommend taking a screenshot for, use, for you to use during the rest of the presentation. First, you'll have to understand which alarms you want to notify on and who you want to send those alarms to. You, you'll take a look at the alarms you have and see that we want to notify on object attribute for photo eye and packaging jam. So this is what we're looking right here, photo eye, packaging jam for those object attributes. And who, who do we want to send these to? We want to send these to the operators. So I create an operator strategy that this will go to. That strategy then points to a tactic or a callout list of people. Next, here's an example of how, how we will be filtering on area. I'll be focusing on the area compressor, CMPSR. This filter will point to the technician strategy. Finally, we'll be focusing on a priority for 955 to 980. This will this area, this filter will send our alarms to the engineers. This is a quick summary of how we will bring our alarms over into Win911 prior to showing you the demo. We will be taking those long alarm names and then pointing them to a specific callout list. We will be taking a filter, filtering on key ideas or words, and then pointing them to a specific strategy. So we'll filter the, filter the alarms in, use a subscription, and then point them to a strategy. So a subscription route is created for the strategy. Okay, here we are inside of Win911. Notice I am on the Alarming System Platform Subscriptions tab. I will click the plus button to create a new. This is where you will name your, your filter. Mine is going to be called Operators. And here you can decide what you want to filter on, areas, objects, priorities. The first one for Operators we said we wanted to filter on would be the photo eye. So this is where you can name photo eye. Notice the drop down list. You can filter on wildcard, contains, does not contain. There's also a regular expression. I won't be discussing this today. The second item we wish to filter on is a packaging jam. So pkg underscore jam. Also notice how I'm using the little asterisk for a wildcard. I don't really need this in here. I'm just showing you a demo for uh, how you can use that asterisk for a wildcard. So this is our first filter for operators. Operators, photo eye, and packaging jam. That is all the orange items in the list.
Next, we will create one for technicians. In this filter, we will filter on specific areas. If you recall, we wanted to filter on the word compressor, CMPSR. And I will do a contains filter. So anything can, any area that contains CMPSR will be filtered into this uh, subscription. So that's the next one. We can save this. Finally, we will create an engineer's filter. In this one, we said we wanted to filter on a specific priority between 955 and 980. So there's our filter for engineers. Now notice there's also this labels uh, field. If you click on labels, a little pop-up will come up with some default ones, or you can create your own. Um, what this is for, this is for your advanced license of the software. If you want to use an advanced tactic using that license, uh, you can do a call out. So for example, if you sign the safety label to this, this alarm, as this alarm comes in, it will have this label and you can do a call out tactic for anything with, that contains safety. However, to do this, you will need the advanced license of our software. So I'll just go ahead and save our engineers filter. So engineers specific priority. Okay, over here on the side, you have all of our alarms or all of our subscriptions. And now we need to point those somewhere. So we will go to the Galaxies tab. And the first two slides of the presentation, I showed you the connection details and I showed you watchdogs, will be in the subscription routes tab. So all those alarms that we caught, we need to point them somewhere. So click the plus button to create a new one. The first one we will do is operators. And we will point this to the operators strategy. I already created these strategies ahead of time, so they're already made. The next one, technicians and the technician strategy. Finally, engineers, point to the engineer strategy. Now I'm going to make one more filter here. For all alarms, I'm going to bring this to the do not notify. Okay. Now running down the list, as alarms come in, they're going to check sequentially down here. So it's, it'll check, does this alarm meet this criteria? Meaning does it have photo eye or jam? Let's say no. It'll move on. Does it have the criteria for technicians, which is the area of CMPSR? Let's say no. Finally, it'll go down to engineers, and it'll check to see, does this have a priority of 955 to 980? Yes. Yes, it does. So it'll start off a strategy called engineers. This strategy will point to a tactic, which is a call list of people. Finally, what happens if none of your filters catch an alarm that you want to notify on? This is where the all alarms come in hand come into play. And this is where I'll notify on the do not notify. I'll show you in the next step using your log viewer how you can use that as a troubleshooting tool. First of all, what is log viewer? Log viewer is basically a historian which logs all the alarms and events that are happening inside of Win911. Where do you access this? This is accessed through our log viewer folder inside of Win911 or by using this little desk, desktop item. In here, as an example, it shows you the alarms have been acknowledged, unacknowledged, or active or inactive. You can also see some more detailed information about which strategy it deployed. Here's a detailed example that shows the alarm, all the information it went to. Yours would have the, the system platform source. This is just a demo. And it shows you which strategy it went to. So you can double check to make sure the correct callout list happened. You can use these little plus buttons to do some filtering. And you can go back and you can search uh, based on time of day to check to see what alarms happen. Finally, you can use this page as a method to acknowledge your alarms. You can check to make sure your Win911 is connected to your SCADA. In the notifications tab up here, you have some more detailed information about some of the alarms that happened. As you can see, this alarm went out. It said it emailed Frank, and here's the address it went to, um, and it showed it went through successfully. This also shows uh, some alarms that are active unacknowledged and inactive unacknowledged. Let's revisit the troubleshooting using the all alarms filter that we made earlier. This subscription route went down the line, one, two, three, and finally if alarm was caught by this do not notify, what can you do with that? Well, using log viewer, you can pull up to see alarm went to that do not notify strategy. 
why would you use this? Why would alarm be filtered through? Well, maybe going back to our configuration, there's some some case sensitivity with the alarms. You need to make sure that what you configure for your route over in uh, Win 911 needs to match your how you have the case sensitivity set up for your alarm over in your SCADA. Or maybe you just didn't filter on the correct criteria. If you use this catch-all at the bottom for all alarms to go to some strategy, whether it's do not notify or some other strategy you decide, you can use this as a troubleshooting method to make sure your alarms go to the appropriate people. That's all for our system platform subscription filters video. Thank you for watching.